Uh, how many of us have been on or know someone who's been on a mission to, trip to an African country? A lot of us, right? Um, so maybe take a second to think about what you think of when you think of that person going to Africa or just what you've been taught about the continent of Africa in general. Um, so I want us to keep thinking about those as we watch this Nigerian author. Her name is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and she talks about her experience encountering these perceptions as a Nigerian student at a Western university. And here's what she has to say in her TED talk. Sorry. Oh, how do I do that? Sorry. Okay. Oh. Uh, I'm going to skip to a point. There we go. Okay. Years later, I thought about this when I left Nigeria to go to university in the United States. I was 19. My American roommate was shocked by me. She asked why I had learned to speak English so well and was confused when I said that Nigeria happened to have English as its official language. She asked if she could listen to what she called my tribal music. I was consequently very disappointed when I produced my tape of Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> she assumed that I did not know how to use a stove. What struck me was this. She had felt sorry for me even before she saw me. Her default position toward me as an African was a kind of patronizing, well-meaning pity. So when I started school here at Biola, I was a sociology major. And I was convinced that I was going to go to Africa or some other uh, underdeveloped, oppressed nation and help them. And uh, somehow, give voice to them or empower them to enrich their own communities. Uh, yeah, <laughs> free them from their oppression. Uh, and then I encountered, sorry, these two social media accounts. So uh, I switched my major to journalism. I encountered these afterwards, but I felt like uh, my perceptions were being changed. And I discovered maybe I had some negative stereotypes of Africa. It specifically. So when we look at the news surrounding Africa, we see headlines that talk about development or some sort of overcoming of something uh, of a disadvantage. And most of these are actually about South Africa. When I searched for Africa in the news, a lot of it was South Africa, which I think is very telling about the ethnic makeup of South Africa and the way we portray development. Uh, but we also tend to see images in media of poverty, disenfranchisement, uh, epidemics, uh, war, hunger, things of that nature. And I feel like those kind of shape our perceptions of what it's like to be a person living in Africa. So you can tell these are some more westernized uh, sources, the Associated Press, Human Rights Watch. Uh, and that's what we're exposed to here in the United States most often. But I would say that these perceptions and these uh, images can create a dehumanizing narrative when not taken holistically. Uh, and yeah, just when we see just these images rather than other, other aspects of these countries as a whole. Um, and so then us as journalists, when we're fed these images, we can go into other countries tainted with these biases of that everyone in Africa is poor or lives in a hut or, uh, you know, it has been exposed to Ebola or things of that nature. So I encourage you to think of your perceptions or some new stories you've thought of or seen or encountered in the past few years when I mentioned these three countries, Rwanda, Somalia, and South Sudan. So for me, I, when I think of Rwanda, I think the Rwandan genocide, right? Two ethnic groups pitted against each other, carrying out horrific acts. Well, that actually happened. We also have Kigali, the, cop the capital of Rwanda, which looks a lot like to down downtown LA to me. Um, so even I was challenged in looking at this picture. Uh, when I think of Somalia, I think of the stories of the pirates, uh, Somali pirates, um, and even movies about that. Uh, but then we see this beautiful castle on the coastline uh, that looks like something in Europe. <laughs> um, so, and then when I think of South Sudan, I think that they're a country just created in 2012, uh, but there's been a lot of conflict there, a lot of war. Uh, but then we see like hotels in downtown area. 
So I think that we're missing a holistic picture of Africa when we just focus on disadvantaged people, um, especially when there are visual narratives being told to us and uh, given to us. And that's no, no fault of our own, obviously. Um, so yeah. And then I think also not only do journalists have a part in playing uh, in these oppressive stereotypes or harmful stereotypes, but we also have uh, aid-based non-governmental organizations that go into these places and put out media themselves. And so that's where I discovered No White Saviors. And they're a group of people who live in Uganda, uh, Jinja specifically, and they take action to educate people since Jinja is a place, and Kampala, Uganda, are places where a lot of white Westerners have come in and set up non-governmental organizations. And they take uh, effort to educate these people, call them out on harmful media practices such as taking pictures of children without the consent of their parents or revealing HIV status of children. And so we have these dilemmas and they take effort to educate and call out these media accounts and these organizations to let them know, hey, like this isn't the best way to approach this ethically and then invite them to learn more and educate themselves. And also, they serve to educate people who are in maybe even evangelical circles who have these perceptions of, oh, I'm going to go to this place, I'm going to help these people, without really being educated on their own biases or ways in which these people actually need help from their own perspective. One example of this and one example of journalists actually reversing these stereotypes is recently uh, ProPublica and Time did a joint story on this organization called More Than Me. It's based in Liberia and this woman right here is Katie Myler and she founded the organization. She claimed to help child rape victims and she had a place for, that they would be housed. But unfortunately, she also subjected these young girls to rape by one of her associates. Uh, so. I believe it was to her knowledge, but these girls were uh, sexually assaulted by one of her associates. He has now passed away. So the story is on ProPublica. They also created a documentary surrounding this. And there are currently people in Liberia raising funds to bring litigation to Katie Myler to hold her accountable for her practices. Also, so then also another example of journalism done really well is uh, this social media account actually started following me because uh, I think because I followed No White Saviors, but uh, they're called the Bright Continent, and they're a media organization that takes uh, action, and they're a group of a uh, African journalists dedicated to telling the story of Africa through the lens of African people. Because I feel like often we have Western outlets going into Africa telling us, "Oh, this is what is happening," without really asking the people there what's actually happening. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a lot of human interest, a lot of color, a lot of just, okay, what's it like to actually live here and be a part of these societies? Uh, so in my personal experience, I've had uh, experience trying to lift up and bring dignity to people and avoid these narratives of suffering and marginalization. Well, they are marginalized, but focusing just on that. Um, so we have Special Olympics Southern California, so I get to take photos at their events, and it's a really highlight uh, for me. And just being able to see, like, People are so uh, capable of success and a range of experiences. And this helps people with intellectual disabilities feel integrated and included in society, which is really amazing. And I was also a photographer at a Calvin Crest Conferences, a Christian camp. And I was able to uh, do Week in the Forest, which is a week for people with intellectual disabilities. And I was able to portray them just having fun. And I didn't see them uh, as people that needed my help, per se. Or I may have thought that in the beginning. But as the week went on, I, they were my friends. They were people that had, you know, each, everyone has a distinct personality. It was so fun just to be able to have fun and hang out with them. Uh, and then Together We Rise. I was a intern for Together We Rise. They are a organization that helps children in foster care change the way that they experience uh, the foster care si system. So what they do on their media accounts specifically is they uh, portray the positive aspects of people and the community rallying together to help a marginalized population. And you hear these stories of children being reunited with their siblings that they've been separated from in foster care, uh, people getting, or children getting to celebrate their birthday uh, with little birthday boxes that people from the community can make. Uh, so this specific event was called uh, Graduation Cards, where we could uh, create cards for uh, children in foster care who are graduating. And so that concludes my presentation. Uh, any questions for me? Or uh, yeah. So thank you. <laughs>